time. You're inside it right now. Tick, tock, or whatever sound your phone makes these days. But plot twist. Time, as we know it, was invented by us, for us, and it's been messing with us ever since. Let's roll back. Before there were hours, minutes, or deadlines, there was just light, darkness, repeat. Early humans figured out that the sun kept leaving and coming back, so they built their first schedule. Don't die before the sun rises. Maybe hunt something. Try not to get eaten. Ancient routines, courtesy of the sky. Eventually, someone noticed the moon did weird stuff too. It changed shape, disappeared, came back. Do it enough times and bam, we have months. Not accurate ones, but it felt official. Stars started getting named. Constellations? Calendars before calendars. Bonus, they looked cool. Enter ancient Egypt. Some genius looked at a shadow and said, that looks like a clock. So they stuck a stick in the ground and watched it move. Congrats the sundial. You could now know when to meet your friend for barley beer at third shadow angle past sunrise. Not super precise, but hey, it beat yelling, meet me when the sun's kinda high. Then Babylon cranked up the math. Lunar calendars, star charts, a seven day week, not because science said so, but because there were seven celestial bodies you could see without a telescope. Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Seven. It stuck. And we never questioned it. Greece took it philosophical. Plato claimed time was a moving image of eternity. Aristotle said, time was the number of movement in respect to before and after. Which basically means, time happens because stuff moves. Profound. Also, confusing. Rome made time practical again. Enter the water clock. Water drips from one container to another, marking the passage of time. Add some gears, boom. You're scheduling public speeches in the forum. Until winter hits and the water freezes, time freezes too. Awkward. Fast forward to medieval Europe. Sundials didn't work on cloudy days, and monasteries needed to know when to pray. So monks got mechanical. Gear-driven clocks started popping up in towers. They struck the hour with bells. No minutes, just the hour. People didn't care if you were five minutes late. They didn't even know what five minutes was. Then Galileo got bored in church and stared at a swinging lamp. He noticed the swings took the same time. Hello, pendulums. Later, he dropped stuff off towers. Discovered that motion and time are linked. Science was catching up. A Dutch guy named Christian Huygens made the first real pendulum clock in 1656. It was accurate to within one minute a day. For the first time in history, people could argue over who was late and be kind of right. Meanwhile, society got obsessed, clocks spread, pocket watches arrived. Now, people didn't just know time, they carried it. Then came trains and disaster, because each town had its own version of noon. So if your train left at 12.03 in one place, it might arrive at 12.01 in another. Yesterday, enter standardized time. In 1884, a bunch of guys in suits held the International Meridian Conference. They decided time would officially begin in Greenwich, England. Why Greenwich? Mostly colonialism. Time zones were born. 24 slices of global stress. Coordinated, rational, and deeply annoying. The 20th century brought Einstein, who casually told everyone that time isn't even constant. It stretches. It bends. The faster you go, the slower time moves, sit on a spaceship going near light speed, and time dilates. Meanwhile, your friends back on Earth are aging, paying taxes, and still trying to fix their sleep schedule. So, yeah, time, it's relative. Then we shrunk time into tech. Atomic clocks were invented, clocks so accurate they'd only lose a second in 15 million years. They use cesium atoms vibrating at insanely predictable rates. Your GPS, your phone, your calendar reminders, they're all synced to that atomic dance. And even now, with all this accuracy, all this coordination, most of us still run late. Time went from a shadow on the dirt to a satellite orbiting Earth telling your smartwatch when to buzz. We created it to help us. And then, it took over. Clocks run our jobs, our schools, our coffee breaks. We have alarms to wake up, timers to fall asleep, calendars to feel behind on. Yet time remains this weird illusion. 
Einstein says it's just part of a four-dimensional space-time continuum. Physicists now talk about time emerging from entropy. Philosophers still argue if it's even real. But your rent is due Monday either way. We invented time so we could organize life. Instead, life organizes itself around time. The ultimate plot twist. The tool became the master. So next time you're rushing, stressing, or counting down the seconds, remember, time isn't chasing you. It's following rules we made up. But good luck using that excuse when you're late to work.